Good morning. Boy we have come a long way this semester. In this our next to the last session in hashtag how to run for governor we cover chapter 13, so let us go ahead and begin. Article 10. Week 13. Votes not to be pandered. How else do we communicate what we think than by what we say? Our first amendment to the US Constitution ensures us our freedom of speech, and speech is of two kinds. Either an original or a carbon copy, and of those carbon copied one is repeated or read, while the other is repeated from memory. One could write a poem or design a sports car as their means of self-expression where what they see as beautiful comes from their experience, or one could sing along to a performer while riding in a fully loaded 2022 Toyota Century. The former is a product of art, while the latter is a product of one's assimilation. And yes, being a public servant, we are expected to conform to a certain amount of assimilation, so, don't get beside yourself thinking we are too cultured to conform to the state. Culinary artists, fashion designers, and even brick masons speak in their respective languages with the medium they are afforded, and so too do those elected to or holding civil office in the state speak with the word that come from their mouths. An oath is thus, a sacred obligation that was made not only by the individual to the crowd, but also to him or herself. Yes, the crowd hears what has been said and holds the individual to his or her words, but the individual also binds himself to his own words. Falling in line with the administration oaths of office are taken not to be broken, and assimilation to the empire is complete with the last. We can't fix our mouths to say we will do something knowing we have no intention of doing it without a peculiar facial expression, so it is not difficult to look in hindsight for those without honest intentions. As good begets good and bad bad, it is much more likely that the good have a positive impression on the bad than the opposite. Thus, everyone in office must take oaths where prostitution of the vote is not allowed, and if votes are to be bought, counties may be formed. So, every person chosen must take the oath of office which binds the officer to the people and the person to himself. The honor system is in place to ensure malfeasance is minimized, whereas one can see those questionable by their demeanor and their facial expressions. The light and the dark are two of opposing natures, but to think that the dark may somehow overcome the light would be as ridiculous as saying evil will triumph over good. Sure, one could say there is a lot of bad here or there, but that is just because those who have taken the oath have yet to make an appearance. Those who have taken the oath associate themselves with others who have also, and the nucleus of morality grows as tax dollars increase, and the ability to expand the government grows. Theoretically, everyone should prefer a life of public service for the benefits associated with being almost beyond reproach, but why are we such so if not for the oaths we took? After an oath to support the US and Tennessee constitutions we must repeat, I underscore 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 do solemnly swear, or affirm, that as a member of this General Assembly, I will, in all appointments, vote without favor, affection, partiality, or prejudice, and that I will not propose or assent to any bill, vote, or resolution, which shall appear to me injurious to the people, or consent to any act or thing, whatever, that shall have a tendency to lessen or abridge their rights and privileges, as declared by the Constitution of this state. By repeating one is ushered into our morality. The wealth and power of more prominent citizens may feel their interests and the states could be won and attempt the prostitution of members' votes which may not be allowed. Lobbying may be allowed, but accepting money, gifts, or other type of reward for voting one way on an issue as opposed to another is not only unethical, but immoral as well. So, neither the legislature nor the citizenry should accept bribes form one position or to elect one into office. In order to maintain this democracy, we need an honest reflection of the wills and wishes of the citizenry and the legislature. Monetary compensation is too close to strong armed robbery to have any place in government, because everyone knows two dollars is better than one, and one five is more than four ones. Communists distribute more food to an area to reinforce the party they prefer, so citizens thank the party who distributed it by voting in their favor. We are not communists, neither will we stand for such behavior. But if one persists on influencing the vote in such a manner, the option is always open for the formation of a new county. If buying votes, then 700 voters is all a representative needs to incorporate under the state of Tennessee. They would be expected to follow all the laws of any other county including the collection of taxes. People think that because there is a lot of citizens in Tennessee, all the land is claimed in another's name. Staying confined in the small but seemingly large boxes of their counties, few look to hurdle the boundaries they know all and far too often. But there is almost always an alternative option where, even though it may seem like an impossible task, it wouldn't be given the right man or woman with the right vision. See, politics has no room for fakers and no time to play, so if some are serious enough about their convictions, they may settle in one of the several unincorporated areas in the state. People have the power to migrate to other communities, or they can start from scratch back in the woods and hills of Tennessee. The bounties the state has to offer have yet to be exhausted, and it's not like we wouldn't be happy to see a 96th county or another president from Tennessee. Thus, everyone in office must take an oath where prostitution of the vote is not allowed, and if votes are to be bought, counties may be formed. All oaths must be taken that bind the people to the representative, the representative to the office and the person to him or herself. 
just as it is difficult to admit negativity in ourselves, we can't think we are ugly and not frown or handsome and not smile. No amount of money can encourage another to think they are bad, and office under the state requires foremost honesty. If one can be persuaded by monies or any other gifts, they have broken the oath they have taken not to support any bill which is injurious to the people. Why? Well, because anyone can amass money, but not everyone can vote, so form your own county, if you have the money. That is all for this week. Next session is our last scheduled one. We can't wait to see you there. Final exams are scheduled and final papers are due.